Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the BMW InBed Braille Kit for fifth wheels on a 2015 Chevy Silverado 2500. Now this is what it, your rails are going to look like when they're installed and you can see when you don't have your fifth wheel in place you still maintain a lot of your bed space. It only raises up just maybe an inch or two and really that's not going to take away a ton from your bed and when you are ready to put your fifth wheel in it's going to drop in. Now this one is a standard size so you have a bunch of different fifth wheels that are going to work with these rails so just because it's BMW doesn't mean you have to go with a BMW fifth wheel. Now this is what it's going to look like when you have a fifth wheel installed on your rails. Now we've gone ahead with the BMW Patriot, which is rated at 18,000 pounds, which for a truck like this is a good match. So once you have this in place, you'll probably notice that you still are able to close up a tonneau cover if you need to. Now we don't have it in its highest setting, but still you have that clearance. And also if you choose one that's able to be kind of taken apart easily as far as the Patriot, you can remove the head and the base separately. You'll be able to take this in and out whenever you need to use your bed or just have your truck be a truck. Now you can see that it is a BMW, and that's mostly because of that gray powder coat finish. But when you do the installation of yours, you're also gonna notice it's a BMW by the quality and how everything goes together. The instructions are really good. Um, there are a few spots that are gonna get a little bit tight here, but really it, it's custom fit to your vehicle. So you're gonna use a lot of the factory spots as far as getting your side brackets mounted up. And then the only drilling required is gonna be to drill holes for your carriage bolts to pass pass through and overall the installation is not that bad to do. Again, just a few tight spots, but you can knock this out in a few hours in your garage or in your driveway. Now, little tip for anyone doing this is I would recommend taking your car to a car wash, kind of spraying underneath it as you are gonna be really underneath your vehicle. So if it's dusty and dirty, you're gonna get a lot of stuff in your eyes. So just kind of wash that down. Maybe the day before, it's gonna make installation that much easier. So to begin our installation, I'm gonna go ahead and get our spare tire load down. Uh, it's just gonna give us more space underneath while working and really having more space underneath is gonna make it that much easier. So now you need to measure your bed to figure out where this rail is gonna go. And we'll be measuring from the very end of the bed, not the tailgate. And something to keep in mind, if you have a spray and bed liner like this, you're gonna wanna account for that. So generally I'll add about an eighth of an inch to the measurement um, and that way we can account for that. So go ahead and I'm gonna just make two marks, uh, one on each side of the truck and that way we can get our rail lined up. Your measurements are gonna be found in the instruction manual and I'm just using a chalk marker here. You can use a paint marker, but chalk markers come off pretty easily. So again, I'm gonna go ahead, get our mark there. One over here as well. Now, if you have a six foot bed, it is gonna be different. So again, you wanna to refer to your instruction manual to make sure you're getting the proper uh, measurements. And these marks are gonna be uh, this outside edge of the rail here. So we'll go ahead and kind of get this lined up and then you can kind of eyeball it here, uh, side to side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and measure it just to make sure that it's even on both sides. So now we need to go ahead and mark our spots where we're gonna run our pilot holes through. Um, now it is specific as to where we're gonna be putting these. So um, on our rear rail here, we're gonna go ahead and mark this forward hole, hole towards the cab. So just put a spot dead center. And then we're also gonna be doing the third from the inside on the front and back on each side. So we'll get those marked as well. So now we'll just set our rail aside and I'm gonna grab my drill with just a small eighth inch or even smaller drill bit. And we're gonna go ahead and make some pilot holes here on the holes that we marked. Now be careful when drilling, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that there's nothing underneath. Uh, the main thing is I just try not to let my drill bit go too far down. Um, and if you do have a uh, bed liner like this, it can be a little bit more difficult. If you don't, you can use a punch to help, but generally, you can get a small pilot hole drilled straight on, you'll be good to go. Now we're gonna take our side rails and put it on the wheel well side of the frame. So you can see that this part's a little bit thinner than this portion here. The holes kind of align with this uh, angle. This is gonna go towards the front on the driver's side. So just make sure you have the proper bracket. And just slide that up over the frame rail. And 
we're looking for, uh, on our 2015, these holes are gonna line up with these top ones. So while we kind of have these in place, we're gonna head underneath the truck and double check to make sure that the pilot holes that we drilled for the rear rail line up. We'll do the same thing on the passenger side and that way we can get a visual cue to make sure that our holes are lined up on that side as well. So pushing our bracket uh, flush against the frame rail and then also up. I'm just gonna put my finger in the holes that we kind of lined up so we know that it's right where it needs to be. And what we're looking for is those pilot holes to be lined up exactly with our brackets. Now, if they are off, you're gonna wanna double check your measurements. But once we realize that we have both of them lined up on both sides, we can go back and enlarge the holes on the top side. So we know our holes are lined up with our bracket. Now we need to go back and enlarge them. And using a 9 16 drill bit, we'll just go through. Same thing as before. Don't drill too far. You want to make sure you don't hit anything below. Um, but we'll go ahead, get these drilled out. I'm going to go through and just kind of file down if there's any burrs. Go ahead and vacuum up our shavings. And then since we have a raw metal edge, I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of spray paint. Uh, since we have a bed liner here, I'm gonna just use some black, but if you still have a painted uh, inside bed and it's a different color, you can always use a clear coat. That's gonna work just the same. But again, just kind of coat those holes. That way it's gonna prevent any rust long-term. Now we need to assemble our bolt guides and these are going to allow us to feed this into the frame rail and hold the bolt in place while we tighten hardware down. Now I went ahead and did our smaller one. Just make sure that you have it in this orientation to the smaller one. The larger one, we're going to have this feed down and you'll see that it's got these little grooves. That's to hold the head in place. Now to get this started, um, I was a little bit worried that it was going to kind of mar up the threads a little. So just be careful. Um, you will probably need a socket or a wrench to kind of get this through. It's a fairly tight fit here. Um, so it's going to be a 15 16 But once we start passing this through, it goes pretty well and it doesn't mess up the threads. Now we're going to put this down all the way to where uh, the little corners of the bolt are going to sit in these grooves. And it's very possible as we tighten it, it may flatten those out. So we'll need to pry those up so it really holds it in place. So pretty well tightened all the way down. And so I'll just kind of align this and you can see it's kind of spinning over these. So I just took a flat head and just kind of pry these up to where it's gonna hold our bolt in place. You can do this on both sides. So now we'll just go ahead and repeat for uh, the other two brackets. So starting with our shorter bracket, we're gonna be on the outside in the wheel well here and we're gonna align this hole. Um, Kind of once it's up raised in place it's going to poke through here so to get this to get this in place it seems a little bit tricky i put a little extra bend on uh, the handle portion just to get the right angle and what we're going to do is just kind of feed this in and you may have to kind of move it around a little bit for that to work and then we're just going to kind of twist this over to where we can get this to poke through and you might need to move the bracket a little bit, but with a little finagling, we should get this to pop through, just like that. And so we're going to leave our stud just like this, and we're going to go ahead and get our rear one. So if you want to, you can go ahead and repeat the same step on the other side. <laughs> on the driver's side, it is going to be a little bit more tricky just because you have your wire loom as well as your hard lines here. Um, so I popped out, there's a plastic push pin that kind of slides into the frame rail. I popped that off. There's also a 13 millimeter that holds the bracket for your hard lines in place. And that's just gonna allow us to kind of move this back and that way we can kind of get a straight shot and get this in place. Now for our rear mount, we're gonna be feeding it in the large hole that's right above the Jones bumper. Just kind of feed that in. And then just kind of have your finger ready on the outside of the frame until you get this lined up and then we'll pass our hardware through. And once we get these passed through, we'll just go ahead and repeat on the other side.
Now we can get our hardware just loosely put on here to hold our side plates in place. So we have our large flat washer, a split washer, and then our nut that we're just going to hand tighten on here just to kind of hold this in place. We'll go ahead and repeat that for the three remaining bolts. So now we can head up to the top of our bed, get our rail in place with the holes we enlarge, and then pass our carriage bolts down. Now, sometimes I've had issues with the carriage bolts not wanting to go through the holes completely in seat. Uh, a lot of times that's going to be from the powder coat, just a little bit of tolerance issues. You can go through with a file and sand that out, or just a, the 916 drill bit, you can kind of work in there a little bit. You know, you want it to still have that bite to hold these in place, but just enough to kind of be able to pass these through. Another option too, you can take a dead blow, try to knock these in place. Just make sure they're sheeted properly. So underneath, we'll go ahead and get our hardware in place. So we have this offset rectangular spacer. Um, we're then gonna put our flat washer, our split washer, and then our nut. Now I'm not gonna tighten this down. Uh, in fact, we're gonna leave everything hand tight. So we started here in the middle. We got this tightened down. Now going to our side brackets, um, our U-shaped spacer, as you can see, is gonna go between our bracket and the bed corrugation. So get that in place first. And then we're gonna wanna use our um, offset spacer block here and then follow that up with our flat washer, our split washer, and then our nut. Now a little pro tip I guess you'd say here is sometimes these are going to want to push up in the bed so if you have something heavy uh, that you can rest on the top of the carriage bolt up top that's going to keep it to where the studs hanging down enough for you to get the hardware in place. And now we'll just go ahead and repeat the same process on the remainder of the bolts going through our brackets. Now here on the passenger side, we do have this heat shield and I've taken plenty of these off before or at least attempted to. Uh, they're difficult and a lot of times these will end up breaking and it's one long piece. So what I'm gonna do just to make it easier, not only to get our hardware in place, but also tightening later on is take a pair of shears and just kind of cut out a section of our heat shield to give us a little bit more access. Now be careful, obviously it's gonna be really sharp once you cut it. So what I end up doing afterwards is I take some channel locks and just kind of bend that edge up so it's a rolled edge rather than sharp edge. Again, just to kind of prevent you from getting cut while tightening and uh, getting your hardware installed. Now you can see we're gonna have much better access to get this in and also we're gonna come back with a torque wrench. So to get a torque wrench in there uh, with that heat shield in place is really difficult. So. This is just an easier way to be able to uh, get to it. And with our hardware hand tightened in place, we're gonna head up uh, back to the bed. We're gonna also wanna grab our fifth wheel base as we're gonna use that to determine the spacing for our front rail. Now we will set our fifth wheel head into place to help us get the proper spacing for our rails. It's also a good idea to measure the gaps on each side to make sure the forward rail is centered. Now I'll mark out the holes that we're gonna drill. We're going to be drilling the center closest to the cab and the outermost holes on each side. Now we can remove our rail and drill our holes. Since the corrugation is lower here, we'll put our spacer blocks on top of the bed this time. The underside will get the other spacer, a washer, and nut. On the passenger side, our hardware will be a little harder to see, but it's just above this rail. Now, I've gotten all my hardware in place, and I will say it is pretty tricky to get those front ones in, um, so I highly recommend putting weight on those carriage bolts. They're going to keep pushing up, and you don't have a whole lot of thread to get the nut started. And I ended up, up also taping my washers kind of stacked together. That way I could hold that up and get it started with my other hand. It is tricky, but just with a little patience, you should be able to get that started. So now I'm going to go back and tighten everything down. Um, most of the bolts underneath here are going to be three quarter inch or side plates that go onto the brackets. They're going to be 15 16 So we're going to want to tighten in that order. So we'll do all the ones that go to the bed rails first, and then we'll tighten the ones on the side rail. And we're going to be doing the same process with our torque wrench. So get everything snug down. So the torque settings for the bolts that are underneath that we used our three quarter inch socket for are gonna have the same torque setting, but our outside ones are going to change to a higher one. So just keep track of that. 
Um, now, getting to these obviously is going to be tight. Um, and so getting the torque wrench and the socket in place is going to be almost impossible. So I'm using a crow's foot to accomplish our torque setting. So if you need to pick one up, uh, these just kind of slip onto the torque wrench. And also if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. Um, but either way, we're going to go through all of our hardware and torque it down properly. So now we're just going to repeat for the remaining hardware. Now with all of our hardware in place, you're going to want to go ahead and get your fifth wheel dropped into your rails. And we're going to get the rest of ours assembled and all that's left to do is start enjoying your fifth wheel. And that was a look and installation of the BMW InBed fifth wheel rail kit for a 2015 Chevy Silverado 2500.